In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Christ is in our midst. In the Garden of Eden, on the sixth day of creation, God said, let us make man according to our image and according to our likeness. And so he made humankind according to his image. This creation of mankind describes who and what we are to be, that we are to be like God, that we were created specifically for this purpose. Let us make man in our image according to our likeness, that we have something intrinsically in us that makes us like God, the image, and that through time spent in prayer and with him, we grow into his likeness. This is what mankind was created for. And so God put a longing within our heart, a desire to be with him, to really fulfill that likeness and therefore fulfill our purpose. And then the serpent slinks along and he comes up to Eve and he tells her, if you want to be like God, all you have to do is reach out your hand and eat from this tree. He tells her, if you want fulfillment, if you want purpose. All you need to do is reach out your hand. And she takes and she eats and she feels shame. She realizes that that likeness that she desired, she tried to grab for herself. This is the sin of mankind. This is the sin of Adam and Eve. We can talk about it oftentimes as disobedience, but it's not just disobedience. It's that God desired for us to become like him in a relationship of love with him. For him, his being, to become ours because we spend so much time with him. And Eve cuts him out, thinking that I can do it myself. That is the lie that she's told by the serpent. And he will go on to the rest of humanity and tell us other lies. Father Henry Nouwen, who is a Dutch Catholic priest, has identified three lies that the devil tells us to mislead us from this original purpose and fulfillment to be with God and to become like him through his power and his grace. The lies that the devil tells us are, I am what I do. I am what I have, and I am what other people think about me. Using these lies, the devil can pull us away from our fulfillment. He can pull us away from the fact that our longing is for God and that only God can fulfill that longing. And he can tell us, the more stuff that you have, the more you'll be fulfilled. And last week we read about Lazarus and the rich man and how the rich man wouldn't even give the scraps from his table to the man Lazarus and how in the end he was suffering and tormented because he spent his life building up his fulfillment by amassing wealth and material and not sharing it. And so he fell victim to that lie that he is and can find fulfillment through what he has. Throughout the scriptures, we see the Pharisees again and again and again criticized that they want to be seen in all of the marketplaces, that they love the prime seats at banquets. And we read before Lent of the Pharisee who stands in the temple and says, I thank God that I'm not like this person. He has been convinced that as long as other people think the right things about him, he will fill that longing in his heart. He believes that he actually is what other people think he is. But that last one, or the first one, the one that Eve fell victim to, that I am what I do, that, that is a special one. That is a trickier one for us 
because the other two are so obviously a misuse of the gifts that God has given us. But oftentimes we fall to this one because we think that we can do it ourselves. And this is the problem that is faced by the woman with the flow of blood. For 12 years, she has gone to doctor after doctor and she has spent all of her living trying to cure an ailment. What she longs for is her health. And so she does anything and everything that she can. And at first glance, we can't blame her. At first glance, we can look at this and say, of course, anyone in that situation would do everything within their power in order to find health and healing. And this is not to say that we do not need medicine. But she believed that if she spent enough money, she would be able to find the cure. Of course it's out there. Of course, if I just do more than I did last time, I'll find what I'm looking for. Of course, I'm just not trying hard enough. Of course, I just haven't spent enough money. And so she perpetuates her suffering for 12 years because she just hasn't done enough. The devil has convinced her that if you want to fulfill your longing, if you want to find what you're looking for, you just need to do yourself a little bit more. Eve, if you want to be like God, you just have to stick out your hand. That's all you need to do. And these are lies. We can spend our lives trying to control and do everything within our power to bring about the outcomes that we want to fulfill our longing and our desire, which is for God himself implanted in us from our very creation. Or we can understand the one truth. The one truth is that I am a child of God, beloved by him, just by being, just by nature of my existence, I am loved by my master, my creator, my God, and my father. And so it does not matter what I do, I am loved. It does not matter what I have, I am loved. It does not matter what people think about me, I am loved. And when I know that I am loved, then I am free to pursue rightly my God and find fulfillment. What this looks like today in the story of the woman with the flow of blood is not her, but Jairus, who on first recognizing that his daughter was ill, went first to Christ to bring him to the home. He understood, I am beloved of God and God is in my midst. Therefore, I don't need to spend any money. I don't need to do anything other than to go to him. And Jairus goes first. And because of that, Christ leaves what he is doing and goes and heals and resurrects his daughter. Because his longing is directed towards God. Finally, after 12 years, this woman learns the lesson that Jairus knows automatically. She sees Christ, and she finally, after 12 years, reaches out her hand to ask God to heal me. I have spent all I can. And what does Christ say? He says, your faith has made you well. Not all the money that you've spent, not all of the times that you try to be in control and try to do it yourself, but once at the instant that you reached out to me to find your help, to find your fulfillment in me, immediately you received what you were looking for. Imagine if she had the faith of Jairus to come to him first, to seek him out, to go to the temple, to pray, and ask the priests to offer sacrifice on her behalf. 
Imagine if when we face illness and struggle, we first come to the church and then go to those that God has given the talent, the blessing, the grace, and the knowledge to heal us. But not to go to them first as if they can do it without his grace. This is again not to be perceived as anti-science or anti-medicine, but to understand that medicine and science are the gifts that God has given us. We turn to them when we understand that it was through his blessing of humanity that we were able to discover and examine and find ways to find curing. And separate from him, these advances won't fulfill our longing and our desire. And so, we must ask ourselves, which of these lies that the devil tells us do we fall victim to? Like the woman with the flow of blood, do we believe that we can do and find fulfillment as long as we try a little harder or are in control of the situation and take complete and total ownership and leaving no space for the Lord to work and act? Like the Pharisees, do we seek other people's opinions as if accolades can really fulfill that longing that has been placed in my heart that only God himself can fulfill and so live our lives Yatamacha to Cosmu for the eyes of the world and not for our God? Do we live our life trying to amass and accumulate material or things because that hole inside of me can be filled if I just have more stuff? These are the lies that the devil tells us. Once this woman who had the flow of blood rejected the lie that she had been living for 12 years, once she turned back to faith, once she said, I will reach out my hand, not of my own accord, not to try and control, but in submission to my God, then she found the fulfillment of what she was looking for. I pray that we can look within our hearts and examine and expel all the lies that the devil has told us, or perhaps even we have been telling ourselves and remember that one truth, that we are his beloved children, created with a longing in our hearts that only he can fulfill. Amen.